and you know my first Michelin star in 1986 for British food and I was reintroducing you know sort of faggots in onion gravy and braised oxtails and mashed potato and got a Michelin star for it you know I was trying to make a statement I wanted to be one of the first chefs to really say look we've got some of the finest ingredients in the world you know, people, everybody wants to buy Scottish salmon, everybody wants to buy longestines, we get them, these were flown in from Scotland, we're using here at the moment. Um, if you want scallops, you want to get those from the West Country, just off Cornwall. Uh, but the finest strawberries, raspberries, fruits, those summer fruits all come from the UK. The best asparagus in the world is Britain. Again, Scottish beef, English beef, Welsh lamb, Welsh leek. It goes on and goes on, Kentish apples. And I just felt, if we've got the foods, that are grown here. Whatever happened to our repertoire of dishes to go with it, if you look at the history of British cuisine, you'll find there was a very huge Indian influence and those spices were starting to be introduced into um, British cuisine. Um, so yeah, there are some absolutely fantastic stories. Look at Mrs. Beaton, Mrs. Beaton, you know, her, her cookery books. I wanted to take ideas of, of old but give them a new introduction. And it's about having the right quality ingredients. It's about actually trying to put together and blend those um, strength of taste, those strength of textures. Um, and it's about a different depth of, of flavour. All we're using though is British ingredients, however, so we're doing the white tomato soup. Um, but they are bright red, they are juicy from little cherry tomatoes to plum tomatoes, they are gorgeous. But the soup is pure white in colour, but there is a way of taking all the essence from them which has then got a clarity about it. It hasn't got any pink or red. It's very absolutely, it's almost like looking at um, a very pale consonant.